Creating 3D environments using Blender, especially exterior scenes, requires a lot of work and a lot of time. Fortunately, there are some great tools and techniques that can help you as an artist to get the job done. This video is brought to you by Grasswald. You can access a library of premium quality 3D nature assets and then use their free scattering add-on Gscatter to create amazing virtual worlds in just minutes. With Blender, you can create a huge variety of environments for video games, movies, VFX animation projects, you name it. Imagination is gonna be the only limitation. Everything from sprawling cities to lush forests and desolate wastelands to bustling airports. You can create detailed interiors like for example the eerie corridors of a space station or perhaps a fantasy castle or even maybe the shifting sand dunes of a vast desert. Generally speaking, there are two main parts to consider when creating any environment. The first part is man-made everyday objects such as tables, chairs, roads, street signs, lights, cars, weapons, buildings, you name it, which will have varying levels of complexity. The second part is nature, such as plants, trees, grass, flowers, and so on. Essentially, any form of vegetation. Oh, but there is a third part, which is people and animals, but that's for another time and another video. If you have ever created a rich environment before, particularly a nature scene, the one thing you will learn is that, in order to make it really believable, you will need to add lots of details. And by that, I mean lots of objects, from the large ones to small ones. When we look at a real landscape, our eyes might skim over everything, but we understand that what we are seeing is genuine. When you are creating a 3D environment, if you miss out on these details, then something won't look quite right. Creating vegetation from scratch in Blender or any other 3D modeling software is a challenging endeavor for several reasons. First of all, there is a great deal of complexity, with organic and often irregular forms. Unlike most made man objects, the natural world is characterized by subtle variances and intricate details, making it difficult to replicate digitally, in our case, making 3D models of these nature assets. For example, when you embark on the task of creating a tree, you must consider many things such as the trunk structure, the branch sprawl, and the leaf distribution. Understandably, all of this can be seen as overwhelming, with each of these elements requiring a different modeling technique and a different approach. For the trunk and branches, you might sculpt them to achieve the organic shapes or use a generator that simulates the growth pattern of a tree. And creating leaves presents another challenge due to their sheer number and the need for transparency and subsurface scattering to mimic light passing through them. Most people don't even know what subsurface scattering is. In addition, realism in vegetation is not only about individual plants but also how they interact with their environment. Factors such as direction of light, the season, the health of the plant, and its age can significantly affect its appearance and this requires careful texturing, shading, and sometimes even simulating growth or the decay process to achieve a believable look. Another aspect that not many people think about is scattering. When building a scene that involves nature, one of the most time-consuming tasks is the placements of hundreds or thousands of objects like plants, trees, flowers, or other organic elements. To be frank, these days it would be crazy to do that manually. All of these elements need to be distributed in a way that looks random and organic, mimicking the chaotic yet harmonious appearance of nature. And doing it manually is not only impractical, but also inefficient. Scattering tools can help. They allow you to distribute multiple objects across a surface in a way that both looks natural and, as a result, believable. For example, grass might need to be denser in certain areas with variations in height and color but less dense in others, like on a well-trodden path. Trees might cluster in a forested area, but thin out towards the edges. Indeed, I would say the scattering tools are a critical part of the process, giving you full control over distribution, scale, orientation, and variation. Blender has some tools to help you with the scattering process, but things become even easier when you leverage the power of other tools and resources just like most artists who create amazing environments. And this is where Gscatter comes in. 
G-Scatter is an incredibly powerful scattering add-on for Blender, which is completely free to use, even for commercial projects. Developed by Graswald, who are well known for their superb, botanically precise 3D vegetation assets, and G-Scatter is built on geometry nodes and allows you to create breathtaking CG nature scenes with ease. A strategically planned interface and toolset provides you with the ability to craft scenes exactly how you wish and build the environment from the ground up or load pre-built environments to quickly populate a terrain. The add-on offers effect layers to control distribution, proximity, scale, and rotation alongside numerous masks to determine how your plants are scattered and where, and you can even add wind. Additional settings in the optimization panel give you options for proxies and camera calling to keep your system running smoothly, while the environment creator panel allows you to save any scene you build as a custom environment ready to use again and again. This kind of comes with some free premium assets to get you started, but there are also hundreds of other plants available on the grass vault store, such as grasses, flowers, weeds, moss, debris, and a lot more. And all of these assets and environments can be purchased with or without a subscription, which is cool. You can grab this scatter now by signing up for a free account using the link below. But creating natural environments in Blender is not just about vegetation and natural environments. You also need a terrain to scatter the assets across, using simple modeling techniques like noise and displacement, or using Ant, the free add-on in Blender. And you can achieve good results using that. But for even better results, it is a great idea to use professional add-ons, which will give you more options and will help you save a ton of time. Buildings are also a very important part of an exterior environment, unless you want to create a project that is far away from civilization, such as a forest or a desert, and in this case, of course, it's not going to be probably needed. But a post-apocalyptic environment is going to be a perfect mix of urban environments and nature, where you can combine techniques and tools to achieve the looks that you're after. The obvious things to do is to create the building manually using Blender's modeling tools, which are more than capable. However, if you want editable variation and the results to be believable, you probably want to do it procedurally using geometry nodes or probably using some of the tools and add-ons that provide the power of geometry nodes inside Blender. At some point in your environment creation process, you're gonna want to think about skies. And there are many elements that make up a sky, such as clouds, color, and the sun. In addition to the time of the day, atmospherics, and so on. And they all play a vital role in making a project believable. An obvious option is to use HDRIs. These will provide a both backdrop and lighting for your scene. And there are many free HDRIs available online. Or if you feel adventurous, you can create your own. It all depends on what your project is gonna be. On the other hand, clouds can be modeled directly in Blender. But this is gonna be a lot of work compared to using some ready assets. Again, your final goal will determine the route you take. When it comes to rendering, you may already know that Blender has two main options. The first one is Cycles, which is a physically based render engine. Cycles is really powerful and is gonna be ideal for final renders, providing numerous options to realize your environment scenes in a superb quality with ease and speed. The second option is real-time rendering with Eevee, which is really great for evaluating your quality, I mean the quality of materials and textures, and see how everything is coming up together in your scene, but at the end, Blender is great for rendering and can help you render amazing results. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.